Hi, uh, I'm Keith Edwards, and if I'm doing this right, and you're doing this right, uh, what you are watching is a video that summarizes the first day's lecture. Welcome. Uh, this is week one's video, first day. Um, I, first thing I want to emphasize is that a lot of this class is going to require flexibility on both our parts. The pandemic has created a completely new learning environment uh, for both of us. So what we are doing is we are, uh, we are keeping an open mind. <laughs> and I hope you are as forgiving of my mistakes as I hope to be forgiving of yours. Inevitably, we're going to run into problems. Uh, I tried to anticipate as many as I can. And, but there's always the unknown. Uh, we, again, we've never done this before, so we will address these issues as they come up. And if we keep a sense of humor and an open mind and, a, a, and flexibility, uh, we'll be fine. Okay, uh, again, welcome to uh, what promises to be an interesting semester, <laughs> and welcome to my writing class. This is it's going to be a different class than you've ever had before. One of the things I like to open this class with is the, the uh, at least seemingly good news that this is not a grammar class. This is not uh, a, a punctuation or spelling class. Uh, yay! This is where uh, usually my classes cheer. I can't hear you cheering through the through the, through the internet. Um, it's not that those Elements aren't important. They're very important. They're the foundational tools you need before you can get into a writing class. Uh, it's just that the idea that grammar, punctuation, spelling, all that stuff is, is you already know that. You already have a good foundation in that, uh, that material uh, that allows us to go into using writing, using those tools to to construct writing uh, for what I feel is, is the purpose of, of this technology. And that is to connect humans, to communicate uh, my ideas to yours and to develop my own ideas, to externalize my, my, my thought processes and be able to, uh, to complete ideas better in a, in a, you know, externally on, on writing. Okay, so um, as I said, it's expected that you know this, these, 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 these tools, the, the grammar, punctuation, and spelling. And I'm sure a few of you are going, I don't really have a, a good foundation in spelling and background. Other than that. Okay. All right. Um, now's the time to get it. And that brings me to our first word. Uh, one of the things that I want you to, to uh, embrace uh, perspectives that I want you to embrace this year. And that is being autodidactic. What does autodidactic mean? It means literally self-teacher, autodidact, self-teacher. Uh, you're going to have to not be passive. You're going to have to be very proactive in your own educational uh, career. Think of it like this. I have what, about 120 students that I'm going to be chasing around behind this year. You are many. I am one. Uh, there's no way I can make a one-size-fits-all lesson that's going to appeal to every modality, every level of education, everybody's uh, type of understanding. Um, if you just sit passively by and wait for this education to happen to you, it's not going to happen. You have to engage in your own education. You have to reach out and you have to let me know where you're at. So in other words, if you can't put it down next to a verb, it makes sense. I need to know that, okay? Um, or on the other side of the coin, if you've been writing research papers since sophomore year, you don't want to sit there bored while I go over the same stuff over and over, right? So what I want you to do is, is be very communicative, all right? Let me know. Uh, and that leads me to my next word. Along with you being proactive and along you, with you being autodidactic, uh, I want you to be metacognitive, metacognition. That means knowing your own thinking processes, knowing your strengths and weaknesses, what you know, what you don't know. You know what you don't know. 
I don't. And I'm not going to know unless you tell me. We have a lot of material to cover this year. Uh, we're putting 20 pounds in a five pound bag. And I've got a lot to cover. Uh, if you've looked at the course document, if you've looked at the folders on Blackboard, and we'll go over that in a little bit, uh, you know it's, it's a substantial amount of work and a substantial amount of reading. So in these lectures, I'm going to be moving fast. I have to. I have to get all this stuff in. And if you don't stop me, if you don't slow me down, if you don't ask me questions, I'm just going to assume that you know this stuff and we're moving on. Okay? So slow me down. Stop me. Communicate. Um, that's the whole basis of a writing class is communication. Um, maybe one of your classmates has a question, doesn't understand uh, how I explain something. If you understand it, and you can explain it better because you share the culture, the background. Uh, I'm a boomer, you know, what do I know about Gen Z, right? Maybe you can put it in terms or phrases that, that uh, use analogies that are, that are more applicable. Um, please jump in. This is a collaboration. I want you to change how you define your role in this classroom. You are no longer students. Okay, in, in the sense of K through 12, where you, you line up and you uh, have to have a note to go to the bathroom and you have to ask permission to, to do anything, you know. Um, I want this to be more of a workshop. Okay, I want you to give and take. I want this to be uh, an equal partnership. Uh, I want you, for example, you know how to be a first year college student better than I'll ever be, uh, I'll ever know. So uh, you know your experiences, you know how you learn, you know you better. I need this information, so work with me, collaborate with me. We share the goal of how do we get you out of 101 and on to the next level. So let's work together uh, to accomplish that goal, all right? So you're no longer students, you are now academic colleagues. Welcome to the university. All right, moving on. Um, since we're talking about communication, the best way to communicate with me is over email. I don't have an office phone anymore. I don't have an office. Ah, this is my office right here on the couch. Uh, so, so send me an email. Uh, I check my email every day. I expect you to check your email at least once a day. Check Blackboard, check email at least once a day. We have a couple of avenues for communicating. Email is the best. I have a written record of what I say. You have a written record of what you say. Um, what we, we, there's that, that kind of reduces uh, any kind of miscommunication, but it's also time stamped and dated, so we've got a record. So that's the best. Uh, if you uh, send me an email, use make sure you use your SIUE account. If I get uh, a, an email from hotguy30 at gmail.com, I guarantee it's going in the spam fault folder. It'll never be seen again. Use, use email. When you are handing in assignments, this is in the syllabus, but I, it bears highlighting. When you are handing in assignments, they have to be in Word, a Word document, Doc or DocX. It has to be an email attachment. I want just that avenue for submission of material, okay? I've been, I, when we had the pandemic hit, and we hurried and, and slapped together a, 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 an online class to finish out the semester, last semester, I was getting emails, and I was getting SharePoint, I was getting... Google Docs. I was getting all kinds of homework from all over the place, and it was a nightmare. I want one avenue, one channel for information, and one type of format. It'll make it a lot easier for me. If I have to get it from 15 different sources, it's a nightmare. So, you know, again, you are many. I am one. Uh, email, contact. Uh, I talked about that. Oh, anything you send to me, I want you to archive. Um, all your material, save it, save it, save it, save it. I can't emphasize that enough. It will come up and we will be revisiting it and using it again later in the semester. So if it's, even if it's rough drafts, I don't necessarily have to see all that stuff, but it will have value for you later on. Trust me on this. E save your emails, save your assignments, save, save, save. 
Okay. This is going to be an asynchronous class. What does that mean, Keith? I'm glad you asked. Asynchronous means we have a block of time on your schedule, and we're going to meet during those times, or at least one of those times. But the bulk of this work is going to be done outside of class. In many ways, this is going to be like a graduate student's class, a graduate level class. Uh, when I was in grad school, uh, and I had an hour and 15 minute class, it consisted of me basically hurriedly taking notes uh, for what I was going to do for homework, uh, because I was going to be busy doing that homework the entire time, and I had better get it done before the next class came along, because we're moving on, all right? This is not going to be quite that bad, but there's going to be a, a substantial amount of reading. We're going, it's going to be text-heavy. Um, there's going to be some communication, but the way I have it set up is like this. Tuesday is class a day. Tuesday is the day we have the lectures. Tuesday is the day I introduce any kind of information that maybe is not covered in the text or, or, or in the uh, uploads that I have on Blackboard. That's me talking to you. Thursday is going to be more open. It's going to be office hours slash conference slash whatever you need. Um, if you need clarification on the assignments, if you need, you know, uh, further explanation, you would need me to repeat something whatever. Thursday, you, if you've got a question, show up. If you don't have a question, don't show up. I'm not going to really worry about uh, the attendance on Thursday. If You're not going to get credit just sitting in the back like a house plant thinking you're going to passively absorb information. If you, if you want to actually, if you show up on Thursday, actually engage the class, engage me, ask questions, you know bring something to the table. Otherwise, don't just sit there and stare at me. Uh, if you don't show up, I'm not going to show up. Be okay? Uh, email me the day before Thursday. Let me know if you're coming. Let me get an idea of how many people are coming. And give me an idea of what the topic is. Like, Keith, I'm going to be there on Thursday. I'd like to talk more about uh, the micro themes. Great. I'll have that material prepared. That'll be the discussion. You know, we'll move on from there. All right? So Tuesday, I do the talking. You have to be there. Show up. Take notes. You know, buckle in. Thursday, I'll be there. You don't have to necessarily be there. Um, let me know what's going on. And it's you do the talking. You, you take control. You're the driver's seat. The rest of the week, um, everything is already uploaded on Blackboard. If you look at the course folders, week one through week 16 is there. And pretty much everything that's in the course description is in those folders. However, I warn you, uh, again, the unknown, uh, it's subject to change. So look for changes coming up on Blackboard. Look for uh, modifications. Look for uh, things getting moved around. <clears throat> We're trying to, again, uh, take into account all the potentialities. But you don't know what you don't know, and we won't know until we get into it, so be flexible. Uh, let's look at Blackboard. Why don't we? Well, no. Wait before we get into Blackboard. I want to talk about Zoom a little bit. A um, couple of things. Protocol. When you come into the class, I would prefer that you have your mute on if you look down here, I don't know if that shows up on the video or not, but in the, in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the, the little microphone for mute. Um, click on that, mute yourself, all right, before you get into the class. And then if you need to talk, press the, the space bar. I'm going to do it, okay? I'm pressing the space bar now, so you can hear me now, but I'm holding it down. It's a toggle. Uh, you just suddenly toggled it on, toggled off the, the, the sound. If I lift my finger from the space bar, say you couldn't understand what I was saying, I hope anyway, uh, because I had the, the, the toggle off. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube and you have the closed captioning on, you probably could figure out what I was saying, but, you know, regardless. So mute it. If you need to talk and say something, press the button. Say what you need to say and unmute it, all right, or, or remute it. Uh, the whole thing is we've got 25 people, 
and there's a lot of ambient noise. And if there are dogs barking and kids screaming and everything in the background, it's going to be really, really distracting. That's why I also suggest strongly you wear headphones. The headphones will uh, help help you focus. Uh, the other thing, uh, make sure you've got your correct name underneath your picture. Uh, part of what I'm doing, at least on Tuesdays, if not Thursdays, is I'm, I'm checking attendance, participation points. And you'll see that's a chunkier grade if you, if you go over the syllabus. Um, if you have Dragon Boy 32 uh, as your name, and uh, I don't have Dragon Boy 32 in my roster, uh, Dragon Boy is going to get all the participation points, and you're getting nothing. So, uh, you know, make sure you have your name there. And I can... Now, if you want to have, like, like, if your real name that's listed in the roster is something like, you know, William, but you go by Tony, that's what you want to be called, okay? Have, have your school name there, William Smith, and then in parentheses have Tony, and that'll be my little code to, to call you what you want to be called. I don't want to call you anything you don't want to be called, even if it's Dragon Boy. Uh, but have that in parentheses so I know, okay, I look for this name on the roster, but this is what you prefer to be called, you know, that I can honor that. If you want to talk, don't just hit the toggle and start yakking because 15, 20, 30 people will be doing the same thing. It'll be, uh, you know, chaos. Under participants, if you look down on your toolbar, about fourth from the left, you'll see participants. If you click on participants, you'll see a little uh, pop-up. And in the lower part of that pop-up on the left, you see a little blue hand for raising your hand. Go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you, you know, hey, Dragon Boy. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but anyway. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go on from there. All right. I'm going to share the screen now, I hope. Uh, and we're going to go to Blackboard. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. You can tell I was working on my YouTube. Ha ha ha. Hope this works. Let's type in, well, it's right there. Blackboard. All right. Uh, when you sign into Blackboard, you'll see something like this. It might be a different color, but it's framed to something similar to this. Uh, over here under my courses, you'll see all the courses that you're signed up for this semester. Uh, you probably won't see instructor. I'm just teaching 101s this semester, so I'm just going to click on any 101. When you click on your class, this should pop up. This is the announcement page. Most of the like immediate communication that I need to get out to everybody, you know, if there's like a news flash, like a uh, flash, we're, we're not doing the assignment next week or whatever. It will be here. Okay, so keep an eye on this. Like I said, sign into your YouTube. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> it's on my brain now. Sign into your email. Sign into your Blackboard at least once a day. Look at your assignment or your announcement page here. Make sure um, everything is still cool. If you don't see any changes, you know everything's cool. This is my little welcome blurb. Uh, read it at your leisure. I'm not going to take the time to read it now. But, you know, welcome to class. Most of the communication on Blackboard is going to be in one of three areas. All right. This is one of them, the announcement page. The next one I'd like to go to is where your textbooks are. That will be on Red Shelf. If you look at this menu over here, two, three, four, about four or five from the top, click on Red Shelf. This is where all your class books should be uploaded. So let's look at the course materials. All right. As I am making this video at this time, your textbook, Everyone's an Author, this one, okay, right here, see, 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 is not uploaded yet. We were promised it will be in soon. Uh, let's hope. This may be one of those uh, times we may have to adapt, overcome, and improvise to get around the problem. Let's hope it's not a problem. Let's hope by the time class starts, this has been taken care of. All right. So that's where that's going to be. The other book you're going to need is the Norton Reader. That's this book. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the way this works. So the entire textbook 
both textbooks are going to be uploaded. If you click start reading, I give you an assignment. Let's say I give you an assignment. Go to your Norton Reader um, and turn to page 135. If you look up here, this is the page number, page 135. All right. This is another cool thing about this book. If you look over here, if you're one of those people that need the big print like me, you can adjust the print size to make it more comfortable. There's some other stuff you've got. You've got uh, the uh, speech to text. Isn't that cool? So all this is like right there, ready for you. Read me a story. Okay. So that's available. Uh, that's where your textbook should be. And again, that is under red shelf. The other thing we're going to be using, the lion's share of where your material is going to be, is coursework. Go to coursework. See, that's about third from the top. And you'll see a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of folders. Uh, ground rules for class Zoom conversations. Read that at your own leisure. But let me give you a couple of the highlights anyway uh, for, for the purposes of this lecture. Be polite. Be open-minded. Okay. We're going to be in a class with a bunch of people with a bunch of different ideas from a bunch of different uh, backgrounds. Aristotle once said that the, the hallmark of an educated person is being able to entertain an idea that's different without necessarily accepting it. So I don't care if you're conservative or liberal or Christian or atheist or whatever, uh, but I want to understand your subject position. So in other words, I'm not fighting you, all right? I'm not trying to convince you you're wrong and I'm right. You can have your point of view, and I can have my point of view, but for me to fully understand what's going on, to get a complete picture of what's going on in the world, I need to know what you think and why you think that and what your values are. And you need to know my position. I need, you need to hear me as well. And that's the kind of respect I want in this classroom, that you'll, you're willing to give fair voice and fair hearing to many different points of view, many different people. Uh, Again, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying get that data, and then you'll be able to process it and make up your, make up your mind. We have this model in our society of debate, and that being adversarial, uh, where it's like you got one person from the left, one person from the right, they, they collide, and whoever is able to walk out of the arena alive wins. That's not quite how truth is determined. Um, what you want to change that model into, instead of you against me, it's you and me against the problem. So in other words, we are presented with this problem. What is this aspect of life? I don't understand it. And instead of narrowing your focus to one lens, I'm just going to look at it from the conservative point of view or the liberal point of view or whatever male point of view, female point of view, many, many different contexts. I want to look at all these contexts. So I'm going to say, look, I can bring my boomer male point of view to this problem. You bring your point of view to this problem. You don't have to change me. I don't have to change you. I'm not, the idea of who's right and who's wrong doesn't even play into this. It's like, this is how I see it. If that's the way I see it, I see it. I'm sharing that with you. You're like, ah, well, now I see through your eyes, I understand it a little bit differently. This is how I see it. Let's put it out there together and see what we can synthesize, we can pull together and form to solve that problem together. Okay? Probably started lecturing more than I wanted to on that. That's what I want to bring to this classroom, is, is educated, autonomous individuals, secure in their positions, or, if you don't know, secure enough to say, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, that's the other thing I want in this classroom. I want you to be able to risk. I want this to be a safe environment. Okay? I love to say, um, all topics are on the table, but leave all guns in the hallway. This should be an environment, a college academic classroom, all right, should be an environment where we can talk about all those subjects that heretofore have been taboo in K through 12, all right? Topics like racism, uh, drug abuse, uh, suicide, uh, misogyny, 
all those difficult topics that were kind of danced around before. We need to talk about them in here in a respectful manner. Um, and again, we're not be against you. It's more like, how do you see this and how can we solve this problem? These are topics that need to be talked about. And if you can't talk about them at a university level, where can you talk about them, right? So let's, let's use our academics to solve real problems, you know? This isn't just an exercise. We're not writing about, you know, my favorite hamburger. We're actually trying to construct information, construct knowledge. Make no mistake, knowledge is constructed. It doesn't exist a priori floating out in books and space. Um, as new data is brought in, as new information is introduced, uh, this is the way the scientific method works. You incorporate that data, if it's sound data, and you change your hypothesis, you try to form a theory. You're constructing, you're actively building uh, a knowledge. You know, you're building off of old knowledge. For example, if I were to say something like the writing process is is uh, step by step, one builds off the other, kind of like when your grandmother uh, baked a cake with a recipe. Uh, if you had a previous experience with a grandmother who used a recipe and you understood what that was, oh, I understand the writing process a little bit better through that lens, okay? If you never had a grandmother with a recipe, if you never baked anything before, you won't understand it quite the same way. Um, this is where your colleagues in your classroom could say, oh, that's like this, that's like that, or what he means is this, you know, um, how they understand it, we share it, different ways of understanding. So you're not only sharing your knowledge, you're sharing your perspective, you're also sharing your interpretations, okay? Uh, yeah, all right, moving on. Syllabus and course schedule, pretty self-explanatory, pretty boilerplate, uh, read it know it. Uh, this is one of those uh, documents that if you have a question on Thursday, bring it Thursday and I will give you an explanation or clarification there. Otherwise, we're just going to, I'm going to assume you read it, I'm going to assume you know it, and we're going to move on. If I have readings, let's go to this folder here. If I have readings that is not in the Norton Reader, I will indicate this in the weekly folder. And if you are looking for where that reading is at, that's where it's at. One of the readings, for example, that I've assigned is Mortimer Adler's How to Mark a Book. You're not going to find it here. You'll find it here in the in the readings. If you click on this folder, uh, there it is, a PDF of How to Mark a Book. All the different stories and short stories and things that I want you to read can be found here. If I give you an assignment throughout the semester, uh, any micro theme, there's six micro themes, three essays. Here's where you're going to find the assignment sheets. In the folder, you'll see assigned micro theme number one, do such and such a day. You go to this folder, there's the assignment sheet, click on that, and uh, if it works, we hope it does, uh, it should download, ta-da, micro theme number one, what you should do, explain your concept. And again, if you need more information on that, if this is not completely explain, explains everything I'm looking for, and you don't get it in lecture, it's a Thursday topic. Uh, essays, there's the essays that, you're, that I'm assigning, assignment sheets for those. Resources, if you are weak on MLA, I want everything in MLA and in proper format, which means uh, 12 point times New Roman font, uh, one inch margins all the way around, uh, proper, uh, pagination, uh, correct in-text citation, correct works cited, all that, all that. This is some of the foundational stuff you should have gotten in high school. If you didn't get it, this is where you get it. Go to these these uh, resources. The OWL, OWL stands for Online Writing Laboratory. It's put out by Purdue. Uh, it's a great resource. It tells you everything you want to know about everything you want to know. Uh, it has uh, sample sheets. They cover every problem you could have. They cover every type of uh, citation. As writing spaces expand, there needs to be an accommodation in MLA to cite these in a paper. For example, uh, there is a citation for a tweet. There is a citation for a TikTok video. Uh, all these things are listed there. Uh, 
as we are coming into the 21st century further and further, there are more and more writing spaces expanding. A lot of students say they don't read. Um, I would make the argument that your generation reads more than any other generation previously in the history of mankind. Uh, you text, you email, you, you know, you, you upload videos, uh, you create all kinds of different documents, all that kinds of different compositions. Um, but it's how you read and for what purpose you read uh, that might be a little bit different. So, but as you are studying these, these materials, not saying that a tweet is a definitive source, but let's say you were studying the president's tweets um, and you said the president said X, Y, Z in his tweet. You put that in your MLA document. You have to have a citation for that. This is a place that will show you how to do that. Okay. Again, I digress. Uh, let's go back to coursework. Uh, week one. We'll go to week one. This is pretty much the to-do list you're going to see in every week that, that, that you, uh, you have from here on out. Um, at 11.59 of, of Saturday, uh, one minute before week one, that's when all this stuff basically is fair game. Um, you have the entire time between the 11.59 on Saturday night to the other 11.59 on Saturday night to get all this stuff done, get your assignment done, if it's assigned for that week, to get it uploaded in your DocX document to your email and sent to me before 11.59 on Saturday at the end of week one, because that's when week two starts and so forth. So from between now and the end of the week, read and understand the syllabus and course description. Read it carefully. Understand it. Any questions, bring them up. Um, read the ground rules for class conversations, okay, found in coursework. Um, you'll see this. If it's found on Blackboard, it'll say BB. If it says EA, that means it's your textbook. Everyone's an author. EA means everyone's an author. You might see something that says NR. That means the reading will be found in the Norton Reader. So if you go down here, you see number four, EA, thinking rhetorically. That means in everyone's an author, the article thinking rhetorically found on page 5 to 17, that's what I want you to read, know, and understand, and be prepared to bring to class. And after you get all this done, the last thing you do, and see it's number seven for a reason, take the online quiz. There's the online quiz. Okay, what's the online quiz? Don't be scared, um, but know this. Anything that's said in this class, anything that's assigned for a reading, any of the short stories, all that material for that week, I consider fair game for a quiz. You need to know this stuff. You need to just do your work. Um, now you can use open book, open notes, you know, but you got one chance to take the quiz. So uh, know this stuff before you go into it. So I would make the quiz the last thing you do. In fact, I wouldn't take the quiz until Thursday. Uh, until you attend the, if, if you're going to go, if you've got a question, go, go to the Thursday office meeting. Ask your question. Know your stuff before you take that quiz. Because, like I said, you got one shot at it. You have to get it taken before the end of the, the, the week. It comes on at 11.59 on Saturday. It goes offline at 11.59 for that week. It goes offline at 11.59 Saturday, week one, and you'll never see it again. So you got one shot at it. So take, it, take that good shot. Uh, they're not you, – you could blow a question and not lose your grade, okay? You could even blow an entire quiz. They're worth a one point per question – averages about 10 questions per quiz. And again, it's based on, did you read it or not? You know, it's not a gotcha. However, it doesn't sound like much, but when you take uh, 10 points average per quiz times 16 weeks, 160 points, it's like a paper. Um, don't, don't, don't get buried uh, in this. Just know this stuff. Know it because you need to get those quizzes passed. But another thing you need to know this stuff for, this is the foundational material that you need to know before you can even write these essays. If you're going to understand what I'm looking for in these essays, and if you're going to pass those essays with any kind of a grade, you need to, to, to read this. You need to do the readings. You need to read the text. Okay? Let me digress a little bit here. Uh, in terms of grades and grading, I'm a little different from most people. I don't 
usually view, I don't view grading as a moral judgment. Let's put it that way. Um, I like my students. Don't mistake my personality for my professionalism. I like my students. I'll joke. I'll laugh with you. You know, you're my buddy. You're my pal. But if you get enough, you get enough. It's just the way it is. No passion, no prejudice. I, I view the grading as just an assessment, plain and simple. It's not a reflection of your humanity. It's not a reflection of you as a person. Uh, not everybody's going to make it through college. Not everybody's going to get a college degree, and that's okay. I know plenty of people without college degrees that are brilliant, wonderful people. I know many people who are terrible at English who are great, wonderful people. Um, I, for one, am terrible at math. Uh, I'm, I'm a great, wonderful person. So, you know, there you go. It's not, I'm going to give you the grade that you deserve. You're not going to be able to charm your way through this class. I have a professional and ethical obligation to not pass you if you do not demonstrate the, the uh, abilities to, to be in 102 and be successful. Um, it's not fair to you, and it's not fair to my colleagues to put you in a class you're not ready for. So there's my just fair warning. Okay, uh, take the quizzes. Just do your work. And if you've got any kind of question, come and see me. I'm very approachable. I'll meet you more than halfway. You know, uh, I want everybody to get an A. By the way, I like memes, so you'll see these all the time popping up. Uh, so like I said, everything is up there. Let's say you get done with week one. You go to week two. You want to get an idea of what's coming up. Here it is. And again, uh, everyone's an author. There's the chapters you need to do. There's the writer's biography. If you want to look at that and see what that's all about, uh, you know, the quiz is due by Saturday, so get that thing done this week. There's the big ideas quiz. You'll see this here. See this little ghosty outline of a quiz here icon. Um, you'll see that on my page. You won't see that on yours until 11.59 on Saturday. Then it pops up in the, in the student stuff. This is the instructor's view, okay? Uh, if you want to read ahead, fine. I would suggest not getting too far ahead. Uh, reason is, if I suddenly change something in week five, and it's week one, and you're already up to week five, and I change week five, uh, you're going to have to throw all that stuff out and do it over again. While we're talking about material, what it's due and all that, do not, do not, do not, did I say do not? I'll say it again. Uh, do not submit work early, okay? So if it's week one, but you've read ahead, and you're froggy, and you're jumped far ahead, and you're, you're, you did all the week two and all the week three, and you're just going to give that to me and get it done with. Uh, don't do that. Sit on it, okay? Do not submit work until it's due, until it's the week it's due. So if you want to put it in, a, you know, uh, a, you know, comes online 11.59 on Saturday, if you want to put it in, 12.01 Monday or Sunday morning, fine, great, wonderful, but it has to be in the week, in that window. Um, I don't want to get loaded down with a whole bunch of material from all over the place. You know, that's number one. It's not fair to me. Uh, the other thing is that things might change. You're on week five. You complete the assignment for week five, uh, and all of a sudden we get to week four, and I say, you know what? We're not doing that assignment on week five. Ah, I did all that work for nothing. Well, blame yourself. Okay, because I'm, I'm warning you now, uh, don't go too far ahead. All right, uh, on the other side of the coin, uh, don't hand in stuff late. As you'll see in the syllabus, there are penalties for that too. Uh, do your work the week it's done, or get your work into me the week it's done, and it will be fine. You got a whole week, you know, uh, plan, plan your life accordingly. One of the reasons I like to say synchronous uh, weekly folder uh, plan is it gives you a little bit of flexibility too. As I understand, especially with the pandemic, people have kids at home, people have got jobs, people are all over the place. Uh, that's why I'm not really emphasizing the class, the synchronous part of the class as much. I mean, be there for the lectures on Tuesday, um, but I'm really more interested that you get this stuff, you understand this stuff, and you get this stuff done. All right. Uh, because if we get to the end of the year, you've done your work, I've taught, you've learned, we've both done our job. You know, it's as simple as that.
All right, let's get back to this. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about here. Like I said, poke ahead, look around, um, know that it's not carved in stone, but I'm going to try to keep to the course schedule as much as possible. Look at it like this. We'll get all this stuff done, but I reserve the right to move it around and, and decide where and when and how it's going to be done. Uh, that's that for now. Uh, let's get back to a bigger picture of me because I'm so pretty. Uh, okay. I want to talk a little bit more about the different nature of this writing class. Uh, again, this isn't a grammar class. This isn't a class to where I want you to be a passive learner. I want you to be actively engaged in every aspect of the writing process. This is how writing works, okay? It's not, it's not easy. Uh, I had a, a colleague one time, a female colleague, tell me that writing a paper is akin to giving birth. Uh, that when you're the drafting, proofing, editing stages, that that's when you're in labor. It, it's, it's horrible. It's terrible. But when you're at the end and you have a baby, um, it was worth the pain. It was worth the effort. And that's what writing an essay is like for everybody. Uh, Ernest Hemingway once said that it's easy to write. You just sit down at a typewriter and bleed. Uh, this is Ernest Hemingway. And he, he, he likened writing to bleeding on a, on a typewriter. Uh, Dorothy Parker once said that I hate writing. I love having written. And that's kind of the attitude I want you to bring to this class. The, the writing process is not natural. We are not, no one's born a writer, okay? It's, it doesn't come easily to anyone. It's a skill. And it, like any skill, it's a skill that can be learned, okay? Uh, it's connected to the, 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 the language center of your brain, but it's, but it's, a, separate, it's a separate part of your brain that, that processes the writing. Okay. People are born with a propensity for language. Uh, we we uh, have like an instinct for language. Writing is not as instinctual. Uh, it has to be learned. And when you set that expectation for yourself that, it, that you should be writing as easily as you speak, uh, it may be an unrealistic expectation. The way writing works is like this. Uh, you're a potter, Okay. Uh, writing a paper is like making a pot for a potter. When a potter starts out with his wheel, he takes a lump of clay, and slaps it on the wheel. It looks nothing like a pot. It looks like a pile of white, wet dirt, let's say dirt. And what does a potter do? He spins the wheel and he starts shaping it. He starts adding to it, taking stuff off, you know, using different tools, scraping it. And eventually, after working his craft for a while, he has a pot, okay? And the first pot he ever threw probably looked like a lumpy ashtray. But as he continually cast those pots, they became better and better and better. You know, writing is a lot like that. It's a skill that the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And also it's like, like forming a pot in that the first draft is always just a lump of wet dirt. It's, it's, it looks like garbage. But, but in the first draft, there's always a few gems that you can take out, throw away the bad stuff, and now you got something you can work with. And then you'll have another pile of dirt with more gems. And then you take those gems out, and eventually, after refining it and processing and polishing it, you will have a, a, a decent essay. Okay. When I had basic writing classes before, I would have students that said, oh, I always got good grades in writing. And I'd say, okay, well, then tell me how to write an essay. I'd stand up at the whiteboard. And they would give me feedback. They would say, oh, you need a title. Okay, draw a line and I write title here. What else do you need? You know, now they're getting on board with it. Oh, you need a, an introductory hook line. Okay, you need three main points and you need a thesis. And the first paragraph is the topic sentences are your main point. And you need to explain that. And you need a transition and conclusion and on and on and on. Okay, and when I got done, as you can imagine, the whole whiteboard was nothing but a bunch of lines with blanks. And I said, that's not writing. And I want you to understand that's not writing, at least as far as this class is concerned. That's a form letter. Uh, you need a title, you put in a title. And it's usually a cliched and generic title. You need a hook line, it's a hook line. Have you ever wondered why? Or Webster's defines, you know, something 
that's been hackneyed and done to death. And it's so interesting. It doesn't really hook anybody. Okay, that's a form letter. That may have got you by in, in lower grades because the interest in the lower grades was do you understand the mechanics, okay? You understand the grammar. You understand the form. You do. Let's move beyond that now, okay? Um, let's go into real writing where you're actually constructing ideas that never existed before. Uh, when you're doing writing in college, when you're doing research, uh, this is kind of the uncomfortable part. You don't know where the end is. You don't know what's, what you're going to say until you start writing it. Uh, it kind of happens organically. It grows uh, as you think out loud on the paper, because that's what it is. You're expanding your thought processes to paper, to text. Okay. So if you never got good grades in high school because you couldn't follow the form, you'll probably be a little farther ahead than the kids that always got great grades because they followed this little form letter. Uh, you're going to have to be willing to take chances, to risk, to break out of the mold, to, do, to hand in something that you may think is wrong. Uh, it's been my experience that the ones that, that think it's wrong are usually have more interesting ideas. Okay. The other thing I want you to expand out of is the idea of what a text is and what composition is. It's more than just written words on a page. A text is any symbol, any item that you use to communicate an idea from one person to another. So there can be a text of movement, a gesture. There's a whole uh, discipline called semiotics, which is signs and symbols as a use of, uh, of communication. It could be movement, color, uh, sound, all of these are texts. There's a text in the classroom. You walk into a, a typical classroom. You got desks in a row. You got a desk in the front. The man sitting behind the desk in the front, nobody has to tell you that's the teacher. Okay? It's just because of the text of the classroom, the way it's arranged, you understand what that is communicating to you. All right. These are all different texts. Statues are texts. Art is text. When I was a, an undergrad, I had this wonderful old professor. He's a professor emeritus now at SIUE. His name is Gene Redmond. He addressed our class one day. He was a very, very important man, wonderful human being. He had uh, the home phone number for Colin Powell. He, he knew Maya Angelou personally. I mean, this guy was a mover and a shaker, but he was the most unassuming, humble, approachable man you ever wanted to know. He was in the English department. And he was coming to speak to my class one day, and he comes in with this beat up leather satchel, sets it down, and he takes out this little statuette. And it was a little clay figurine that was over 3,000 years old. It was dug up somewhere in South Africa. And he passes it around to us, and he says, look at this text, and we're looking at this statue. And it's priceless. It came from the SIU Museum. I didn't even know we had a museum, right? And it should be handled with white gloves in, a, in an air controlled room, a temperature controlled room. And because he's Gene Redmond, he just stuck it in his bag and took it to us so we could learn. And I'm thinking if I drop this thing, it's going to be my, you know, I would be paying for the rest of my life. Priceless. But we're looking at this and he says, what's, tell me what's going on. Describe this text to me. What's going on? And it was immediately identifiable. It was a mother holding a baby and the baby was all vulnerable sitting there. And the, the mother was very nurturing and protective. You could see her, you know, she was loving her baby, but she's also very protective, kind of keeping an eye out. You could tell a whole story going on, whole narrative just with this text. And he says, now think about the author of this text. This author lived in a mud hut. He made this with a lump of clay and a, and a sharpened stick, right? And if you were to take him out of that context and bring him into the 21st century, and if he saw an automobile or an airplane or a television set or a computer, he could process it. His brain would melt down. It would be just, it would just, you know, he's just completely out of his context. But here's a guy that created a text, okay, that, that transcends culture and time and language and, and belief systems and even geographic distance and instantly communicated to you. And what you're looking for in writing that makes it a little bit more difficult than a form letter, okay, is that human element, that nothing human is alien to other humans part. That's what the Roman poet Terence said. I am human, therefore nothing human is alien to me. 
you want to, you basically, what you're saying with writing is this is how I do human. This is my perspective. This is how I see things. How do you do human? Okay. And by getting these different facets, it's like looking at a diamond, different facets, you get a more complete picture of what life is, what humanity is, what, uh, what writing is. This is what writing is. This is how you do it. You communicate with writing. Now, for you math majors, uh, and business majors, and engineering majors who took this class because it's a gen ed and it's like, what am I ever going to use this class, right? Maybe I should have led with this. I don't know. Uh, you will. The reason this is a gen ed class is that this very human activity of writing uh, you're going to need this no matter what field you go into, no matter what you do. If you are, let's say you go through this, you know, SIUE, you become an accountant, you get a job, congratulations. It's your first day on the job. What's the first thing they do? They take the policy procedure manual. Folk, there it is. Learn this, know this. And if you have any questions, talk to me. You know, if you don't understand active reading, if you don't understand communication, if you don't understand uh, rhetoric, uh, how to go to your boss and say, hey, I don't want to look like an idiot, but I don't understand any of this stuff. Can you explain it to me? There is a rhetorical way of doing that uh, to convey a message to him without you saying that, hey, I'm stupid. Okay. Uh, but we'll learn all that this semester. See all the good stuff I'm going to be teaching you? All of this stuff has application. If you're asking for a uh, raise, you know, in a non-threatening way, and you're going to justify why you deserve that raise, you know, that's rhetoric. That's oratory, rhetoric and composition. That's this classroom. If you're getting a job, if you're writing a uh, an application letter, if you're writing a resume, all of the, all of these rhetorical skills come into, come into play. Okay, enough of that. I think I've dumped enough on you for the first day. Uh, basically, I, I'll end with this. Do your work. Uh, submit it by 11.59 on Saturday, no later. You can submit it earlier if you want. Do the quiz. If you have any questions, problems, issues, complaints, see me on Thursday. That's what Thursday's for. Uh, and until then, welcome. Uh, let's make this a good semester, and uh, I look forward to getting to know all of you. Bye.